I recently saw this video. Both pilots are unconscious. You're the last hope to save a plane from crashing. Here's what to do. And I realized a new series called TikTok Roast needed to be created because some of y'all out there are giving terrible advice when it comes to aviation. TikTok Roast, coming up. Hey, 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 74 Gear, is all about aviation. Recently, I've been getting a lot of DMs on my Instagram from people sending me TikToks asking me if this is good advice or not from different TikTokers. It seems these TikTokers who have little to no common sense or knowledge about aviation are giving you tips. So before you watch one of these videos and do something that could kill me while I'm on a plane, watch this video. If your plane is about to crash, I'm about to save your life and make you millions of dollars. We are all told that if a plane is going down, to assume this position, but you do not. When you're in this position, your back is going to break, including your spine, and you're going to die immediately. That's because if you survive a plane crash, you can basically sue the airline for millions and millions and millions of dollars. And you're going to win that. So instead of getting into this position, you are going to sit up straight and put your feet on the seat in front of you. This picture's not too accurate, but it's, it's hard to find on Google. So more realistically, you're gonna wanna put your feet up like this and your back is straight. By doing that, your legs will probably break, but your survival rate is a lot higher. They literally want you to die so you don't sue the airline. And if this ever happens to you, hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, you'll see the flight attendants take the position I told you. But the one thing they are right about is you put your oxygen mask on first, then you can help other people with their mask. We're gonna hope and pray this never happens, but if it does, just remember the position. And sue that airline, get your millions. Um, so that's mostly all wrong. When someone says this, When you're in this position, your back is gonna break, including your spine, and you're gonna die immediately. I mentioned before that I was probably a C student in high school, but if someone says they broke their back, I don't know what else they would be referring to except for their spine. I mean, maybe your shoulder blades? I don't know what else there would be back there. You can break your back and survive. It literally happens all the time. But you know what's harder to survive? A projectile going through your head. So if you're in a crash, now your very important head is sitting up here, bouncing all around for parts of the plane to fly through. It's definitely going to ruin your day. And with your knees up like this, your mouth and your knees are going to collide with each other. I'm guessing your knee is probably gonna win that fight, which means your smile is gonna look something like this lovely lady here. And she is a lovely lady, so that is totally up to you. Now let's talk about this thing she says with the flight attendants. If this ever happens to you, hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, you'll see the flight attendants take the position I told you. That's also wrong. A lot of times flight attendants' backs are facing the front of the plane. If you've been on a plane, you know what that looks like. And a lot of times there's not places for them to put their legs up in front of them. And there'd be no reason for them to put their legs up because their back is facing the forward part of the plane, which means that would be where the impact would be. It doesn't make any sense for them to have their legs braced when they're going that direction anyways with the momentum. So you will never see a flight attendant do that. That makes no sense. What you will see happen if you are ever in a crash or about to crash, you will see your flight attendant sitting up in their seat screaming instructions for you, like brace and a bunch of other things that they're taught. And what they'll do is they'll be sitting there and screaming that for the last probably 20 to 30 seconds before impact. That's what you will see. You will not see them with their feet up in the air. Uh, sorry guys. Then after the crash, those same flight attendants that were screaming all those instructions before impact will then be yelling instructions because most of them are near an emergency exit. So they'll be opening a door and then they'll be yelling instructions for you to come and get out of the plane. That will be only applicable to those of you who don't have projectiles in your head or all of your teeth in the back of your throat. Now my job as a pilot is to get you safely to a place where we can land and in most every scenario that I can think of you're able to get a plane to the airport and you're not going to be in a crash. But let's just say that something goes completely wrong and you are going to crash. Your pilots are going to try to find the best place to crash land that plane and then the people who are more likely than not going to be the ones that are going to save your life are your flight attendants. They're the ones that are going to be evacuating the plane and getting you off the plane. So if you're there being a Karen to them the whole flight, you know how that's going to work out. Now this point about being sued. They literally want you to die so you don't sue the airline. The airlines know if they crash a plane, they're getting sued no matter what. So whether you die or not, it's either going to be you suing them or your family suing them. It doesn't matter. They're getting sued either way. This is America. We love to sue people. So here's some better advice. Listen to your trained cabin crew who are trained in crashes that involve aircraft 
or your flight crew that are giving you instructions. Listen to them instead of TikTokers. We are all told that if a plane is going down, to assume this position, but you do not. Okay, first, go back and watch her video. She is 100% correct, and her advice is very good. I can confirm that airline companies want you to die whenever you get into a plane crash. I used to work for an aerospace pl uh, company where we would make the airplane seats. And I can tell you right now that every single seat on the airplane, including first class and business class, are made up of metal frames, tiny screws, double-sided tape, and Velcro. And zip ties. There is no actual, like, sustainability to those seats. The inspections that we would have to go through after seats were complete were for cosmetic looks only and functionality, not for survival rates. Those seats wouldn't even withstand a car crash. A minor one. So when you get onto an airplane, be aware that the seat that you're sitting on is not meant for you to live through if you crash. When I saw her say this... Okay, first, go back and watch her video. She is 100% correct, and her advice is very good. I was like, oh, this will be interesting to hear what kind of magical advice this woman has for us. Let's first talk about this point right here. Those seats wouldn't even withstand a car crash. Great news, most pilots don't get into car accidents while we're flying a plane. Been flying for many years, have had zero close calls even with cars while flying a plane. So that's great. And then on the ground, the 900,000 pound aircraft that I'm moving around on the ground there, if that were to hit your car, it would pretty much have zero impact on me and, and well, it'd suck for you. Here is the plane that I fly kicking a tug along and that tug is gonna be a lot heavier than most every car out there. Planes have so many different backup systems specifically to avoid a crash. Something like an engine failure makes front page news everywhere because it's very, very rare. So when something like that happens, people say, oh, we almost died. Well, no, you didn't. Pilots are trained to fly on one engine and planes are capable, commercial planes that you fly on as a passenger, those planes are able to fly on one engine without any problem. So with the plane flying on one engine, they're able to come back in and land to avoid any type of crash and all the people that were on that plane were totally fine. But if that plane were to crash, let's say into a mountain, you can put the fanciest car seat you want on it and guess what? probably not gonna matter. When I see people spreading this type of fear, it makes me laugh because it's not even logical. What she's saying makes no sense. Yeah, okay, so this seat is med made out of metal and uh, zip ties and a few other things. What does she want the seats to be made out of? They need to be light because the aircraft has a certain weight that it needs to make. So it needs to be light, but there's, I mean, only gonna be what, roll cages in there for everybody? And you think that if your plane hits a mountain at a few hundred miles an hour, that roll cage, that's gonna make the difference for you? I don't think so. Both pilots are unconscious. You're the last hope to save a plane from crashing. Here's what to do. When you first enter the cockpit, don't worry, the plane is flying itself, it's on autopilot. You probably don't have time to figure out the radio stuff. Right here, set the altitude to around 4,000 feet. The plane will descend low enough for you to catch cell tower service. Do not touch anything else. Get your phone out, call for help, they're probably gonna get an air traffic controller on the line. Follow his instructions. Okay, so I guess in this scenario, me and the other pilot up there have died or passed out. And if I'm dead, you can follow this guy's terrible advice. But if I'm not dead, please listen to what I'm gonna tell you. Listen to what he says here. Right here, set the altitude to around 4,000 feet. Changing this thing here to 4,000 won't work. Just changing that number will not change what the plane is doing. I'm not going to explain to you how to get it to change down to 4,000 feet or descend down to 4,000 feet because if we're flying over Denver and you do that, it's really going to suck for everybody else in the plane. And I don't want you to do that, so I'm not going to explain how to get it to do that because it's not necessary. And I'm guessing if you're following this guy's advice, you probably also have me back in a seat somewhere propped up with my back straight and then my knees taped to the tray table in front of me so that way if we do have a crash, I survive. Here's what you do want to do. It's basically the exact opposite of what this guy said. When a pilot leaves to go to the bathroom or go get food or whatever happens during a break period, there's always at least two people on the flight deck. And what that means is that usually there's a flight attendant up there. And one thing that I teach every flight attendant or most flight attendants when they come up there is how to work the radio. I tell them, this is the button you push right here to talk on the radio. So you push this button and start talking. So what I teach them is this, in this scenario that the pilots have died or whatever the situation is, first 
talk right here on the radio. See if you can hear them. Push this button, say something, and then let it go. Just like a walkie-talkie. If that doesn't work, then all you need to remember is this frequency, 121.5. Dial it in like this and move it over. I show them exactly how to do it. I say, dial that frequency, move it over, tell them you're a flight attendant, tell them the flight that you're on, tell them exactly what's going on. We've had both pilots, they have died, and I don't know what I'm doing. These big planes that you fly on as a passenger, these big planes, if you hit the right buttons in the right sequence, they will come in and fly and land themselves and stop on the runway. You really don't have to do anything except hit all the buttons in the right sequence. So the air traffic controller who's there will get you somebody on the phone or on the radio with you to help walk you around to come in and land. That's the best thing. If you go down to 4,000 feet, one, if you're in Denver, you're gonna hit a mountain. If you do it, let's say in California or San Diego area, 4,000 feet, you're not gonna get a cell service. And so now you're gonna what? Keep going lower and lower and lower until you can get a cell reception. And then you're gonna call what? 911 and 911 is gonna get air traffic control on the phone. I mean, that's just never gonna work. And what if you go out of cell service? That's just terrible advice. Get on the radio. The plane is designed to talk on the radio. You talk in that frequency, 121.5, and there will be someone there that will walk you through the entire process and get you safely on the ground. That's what you should do. Welcome back to Andrew Survives Everything, a series where I teach you how to survive literally anything. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to survive a plane crash. When booking a seat, the safest ones are the ones near the back, in an aisle, and close to an emergency exit. People in the back tend to survive the impact the most, and people in the aisle have an easier access to the emergency exits, and sitting close to an emergency exit is a no-brainer. When the plane is about to go down, remove any sharp objects such as keys or pens from your pocket, because the last thing you want is the impact of the plane driving it into your body. And if you're wearing glasses like me, make sure to take those off too, because the last thing you want is those smashing into your face really fast. And also ahead of time, make sure to count how many seats there are to the nearest exit. That way, if the cabin fills up with smoke, you'll still be able to feel your way out. And remember, you might think you want to crawl to avoid the smoke, but you might get trampled that way. So instead, stoop so no one can trample you. And most people who play shooting games know that when you're crouched, you generally move faster than when you're prone. And once a plane does hit the ground, f***ing run. Like it's the pacer test, like it's the mile run. Just get the f*** away, because the last thing you want is this thing blowing up and killing everyone. A lot of the first thing that this guy said is actually true and good advice. Statistically, it has been shown that sitting in the back of the plane is the safest place to sit in the event of a crash. I did a video about it a while back, but when I book my tickets, I don't book my tickets based off of this extremely rare scenario that I'm going to be in a plane that's gonna crash. That's kind of like you bought a lottery ticket and I tell you, hey, just go buy your multi-million dollar dream house because you bought the lottery ticket, so you're basically set. It's the same thing as booking a seat in the back, in the aisle, next to the emergency row for this once in a, I don't know how many million chance that you're gonna be on a plane that's gonna crash. Something else that he said that he liked was this. When the plane is about to go down, remove any sharp objects such as keys or pens from your pocket because the last thing you want is the impact of the plane driving it into your body. In the event that you're in a plane that's crashing and you have the mental capacity to think about the sharp objects that are on you, then yeah, you should take them out. I don't fly with any keys in my pocket or anything that's sharp. I don't have any pens. I keep it in a backpack. I don't have any of that stuff that's on me, so it doesn't really apply to me. And I don't do that for the event of being in a crash. It's just not what I like to have on me. I also liked how he talked about identifying how far you are away from an emergency row. And flight attendants often brief that, have an idea of where you are in relationship to the emergency row. Two rows, three rows, whatever it is, and which direction to go. Because in the event of an emergency, there's going to be a lot of chaos and you won't have a lot of time to be thinking about it at that time. So if you know you have to go three rows back, then that's great to know. Three rows back instead of 15 rows forward, for example. Here's the part of the advice that he said that doesn't make any sense and you should probably not follow. And once a plane does hit the ground, f***ing run. Like it's the pacer test, like it's the mile run. Just get the f*** away because the last thing you want is this thing blowing up and killing everyone. So his advice is run off the plane as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, that's great. But what if you're sitting on the right side of the plane and you just go bolting out the emergency exit that's on the right side of the plane? If the right side of the plane is on fire and you just run through a bunch of uh, jet fuel and other fire and all kinds of stuff, or your plane's sitting on the cliff and you just come bolting out the side of that door, uh, that doesn't do you any good. What the best thing to do is listen to your flight attendants because they are trained in this scenario. What they do is they look out the window and verify what's the best place to go. The pilots will also be doing that. Let's say that they are alive. If we're alive, we'll say, you know, we'll evacuate on the left side or the right side or whatever it is. Because what if you go out the right side, the engines are running on that side. 
well, you versus the engines of a plane, that's never going to work out in your favor. So it's better to listen to your flight attendants. If all of them are dead, then look out the window before you go running out the plane. Look out the window. Is there a fire? No, there's no fire. Okay, then go out. Don't just start just bolting out the plane without listening to your flight attendants or taking a second to look and have a good situational awareness of what is going on before you leave that aircraft. If you want to see some extremely hard landings, harder than what I would say would be a small car crash, check out this video here. And if you want to see me roasting some people who spent millions of dollars making a movie and never asked the pilot if it was realistic or not, check out this video up here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, side up.